Now let's change this model a little to bring out the basic dueling loop shape. We've already changed the title. Next we start removing the nodes that are not generic because they apply to particular problems. Let's start removing them. Now this one right here we may need, so let's save it. This leaves us with these two spirals. There are still some more non-generic nodes, so let's continue to remove them. This one and that one and this one. Then over here, well this applied to the Easter Island problem. So did this and so did that. And see how it mentions clan status? Well, that applied to the Easter Island problem also. This leaves us with not much. But these are extremely powerful concepts. The concept of these two forces and these four nodes. Now first, let's take this right here and turn it into a simple little loop with just those nodes. Now, let's do the same thing with this one. Now, we've still got a little bit of uh, improvement to go on these two node names here. Let's change this one from false promises and claims extolling competition to falsehood and favoritism. Falsehood and favoritism is a higher level of abstraction. It covers many, many things. There's many kinds of falsehood, like ad hominem attacks, false promises, false enemies, the sin of admission, etc., etc. And then, of course, there's favoritism, also known as cronyism. That's where you help out your supporters, even if they don't deserve it. Now, let's give this one a better name here. We're going to name that uh, the very simple node name of truth. Now we've got two very, very simple loops. The big thing to notice about these loops is in this one we have truth, in this one we have falsehood and favoritism. The supporters are about the same, very generic. It's just the type of supporter that happens to be, well, happens to be trapped in this loop by these politicians or fortunately in this loop by these politicians. Now let's draw the three stocks that form the very backbone of the basic dueling loops shape. First, let's move these two loops that we have over to the right. Okay, now the next thing is we're going to add the three stocks. Okay, those are the three stocks. A degenerate is similar to a competitive supporter, but it's at a higher level of abstraction. The definition of degenerative philosophy from the Dueling Loops book is a comprehensive rationale and value set for optimizing the system for the good of the few who are the degenerates. Virtuous supporters are just the opposite. They are the equivalent of progressive philosophy, which is defined as a comprehensive rationale and value set whose goal is optimizing the human system for the common good of all. Boy, what a difference. In between, of course, are the non-committed neutralist supporters. These are similar to swing voters in elections. They really haven't made up their mind. They're not strongly committed. When a neutralist supporter is influenced by a falsehood and favoritism to become a degenerate supporter, they flow from this stock to this one. Let's add a flow pipe with a rate node to show this relationship. Okay, and let's do the same for the other two stocks. We've introduced the powerful concept of memes. A meme is a mental belief you learned from others. Memes follow the same three steps of evolution that genes do. Replication, mutation, and survival of the fittest. 
The only difference is memes live in minds instead of cells. When a neutralist supporter becomes swayed enough by the mantra of falsehood and favoritism to become a degenerate supporter, we say he has been infected by false memes. This is just like being infected by a virus. Memes allow us to more easily and accurately model social systems. Now that we have the degenerate supporter stock, we no longer need the com competition supporters node. It's been replaced by a higher level of abstraction. So let's go ahead and delete it. And then let's move these things over and hook them up. Let's move this over here, this over here, and this over here. And now let's add our little arrows. Okay, now let's do the same thing for the bottom node. Isn't modeling fun? Now let's hook up our arrows. Notice the symmetry we've got here. Symmetry is a very powerful thing. There now. This is the basic shape of the dueling loops. All that's left is to change the two loop names. Let's remember where this social structure came from. The race to the bottom was the competitive spiral of Easter Island, as well as many other societies that collapsed for competitive reasons. But now we have abstracted up a level. Falsehood includes not only false promises to promote needless competition, like statue building, but needless anything that would benefit a politician and his supporters at the expense of others. Thus, the race to the bottom applies to the political world of, day, of today, where the norm is for politicians to use falsehood and favoritism to gain supporters. To show this, we have added favoritism to the model. It was not in the Easter Island model. We're done except for one very important thing. The model doesn't show why the race to the bottom is the dominant loop most of the time. As the model is drawn right now, neither side has an advantage. If we did a simulation run, both sides would gain the same percentage of supporters. That is, they would come out even, the degenerates and the virtuous supporters. Let's fix that by adding another missing abstraction. This is a powerful insight. It completely changes the behavior of the model. The missing abstraction is the size of falsehood and favoritism. Now the race to the bottom has an inherent advantage size of falsehood and favoritism. The race to the bottom will win out over the race to the top every time because the race to the top has no inherent advantage at all. The size of the truth cannot be inflated. A virtuous politician cannot promise more than he or she can deliver, nor can they use favoritism because they treat everyone equally. But a degenerate politician can promise far more than they can deliver, and they can engage in all sorts of favoritism, such as jobs for supporters who don't otherwise deserve them, and so on. This is a terrible state of affairs. If this is the structure of the system, then we're doomed. We're never going to solve the sustainability problem because that's not in the best interests of degenerate politicians. All they and their supporters care about is how can I exploit the system to give myself more than the other guy? In other words, how can I compete to win out over the other guy? The degenerates also don't care about long-term losses like environmental collapse in 50 years because that's just not their problem. It's the next generations. The inherent advantage of the race to the bottom is so critical to understand that let's explain it another way. 
A virtuous politician cannot inflate the size of the truth. All they can say is 2 plus 2 equals 4. Let's add that to the model as a comment. But a degenerate politician is under no such constraint. They can inflate the size of what they say they can offer supporters by the use of falsehood and favoritism. They can say that 2 plus 2 equals 7, or 16, or 27. Let's add that as another comment. For example, the Easter Island chiefs promised their clan bountiful harvests forever, when in fact collapse was right around the corner or already underway. If there had been a virtuous politician on the island, he would have stuck to the truth and said, No, I cannot promise you as much as he can. If we don't do quite a bit of proactive housekeeping, things are going to get pretty bad around here. But nobody listened, because the degenerate politician offered much more. He had a much more effective message. It was false, but it worked all too well. So what can we do? As problem-solving engineers, we can study the model for clues for a solution. The solution would have to push on a high leverage point. This is the only way to solve difficult social system problems. Now where is the high leverage point? Well, it's the same place it was on the previous model. It's a missing abstraction. Let's add it and then explain it. There's the missing abstraction of the high leverage point. If the level of ability to detect political deception is low, then falsehood and favoritism works like a charm. Supporters will not see through the cunning deceptions of degenerate politicians. But if ability to detect deception is high, then the race to the top will be the dominant loop. Okay, now we're done. We've got our basic dueling loops. This social structure has been there all along, but it's been hidden. It's been as if we were constantly tripping over something we can't see, which causes us to fail to improve the system much at all, even with heroic effort. But now that the basic structure is revealed, everything changes. We can see at last. The blindfold is gone forever. There it is, right in front of us. This appears to be the root cause of change resistance to solving the sustainability problem or any problem whose solution benefits all instead of a special interest few. The root cause is the dueling loop structure. And of course, the high leverage point nobody's pushing on. The dueling loop structure is being successfully exploited by special interests notably the corporate life form and its chief allies, the rich and powerful. Because the race to the bottom has an inherent advantage, the size of falsehood and favoritism, it is the dominant loop most of the time, like it is right now. But now that we can see the structure of the system, we can plainly see that the high leverage point of ability to detect political deception probably exists. All we have to do is engage in a little experimentation to find out the best way to push on it, and of course if it really exists or not. Then once we start pushing there, the race to the bottom will collapse as all those degenerate supporters see the truth and flee for their lives to the stock of virtuous supporters. This will cause the race to the top to go dominant. Once that happens, it will now be in the best interests of politicians to solve all problems whose solution would benefit the common good of all. I wonder what problem they are going to solve first. Now that we've seen the basic dueling loop shape, let's zero in and take a look at the race to the bottom among politicians in a simulation model.